kidnapping a devastating criminal insurgency in the northwest these are people who are agnostic they have no future ambition they have no conscience with kidnapped victim like Leila, a sickle cell patient who spent 29 days in the kidnappers' den, the mental scar will remain with her forever. Her father was also kidnapped alongside. About five of them descended on me with branches of trees and started beating me. Beating me at a time I felt as if my shoulder was not on, on me. It is a rural insecurity conflict that has cost the lives of many, some injured while others displaced. It has created the response of local vigilante groups teaming up with security agencies to save the community. We travel to Katsina to talk to kidnapped victims who have lived to tell the tale. I have come to Kasina State to meet a kidnapped victim, Ahmed Abdul Kader, who was kidnapped alongside his sick daughter, Leila Ahmed, with millions to pay as ransom. Abdul Kader, a retired NBC director, and his daughter were kidnapped in his country home in Bakori Housing Unit, Bakori Local Government Headquarters in Kasina State. The story of their kidnap made headlines on several media organizations for days. We travel a distance of 182 kilometers from Katsina to meet him and his daughter among other kidnapped victims in Bakuri. In terms of kidnapping activities in Kasina State, Bakwari local government may not necessarily ring a bell. Towns like Jibia, Basari, Safana, Faskari, Sabwa and Kankara local government area are common in the news. The lack of common bother of Bakwari to the forest may be an advantage to the community as kidnappers hardly assess them. This is the Bakwari housing unit, popularly called Shema Quarters, that was raided where Abdul Kader and his 16-year-old daughter were snatched. I was about to lie down when I realized the bed wasn't made. So I came out to ask my wife to make the bed. I found her in the kitchen preparing some last-minute dishes. And I told her, to go and make my bed as I was just standing there. I had my 11-year-old child come rushing through the palo and shouting, kidnap us, kidnap us. Before I could even move, they, were, they had already rushed into the palo and right inside the house to the kitchen. About three of them holding uh, rifles, AK-47. So they pointed the rifle at me and said, sit down or we'll shoot you. There were three kidnappers who rushed into the house, while others kept an eye on the compound in case of any eventuality. One held me there, the other one rushed to my wife's uh, room. When he saw the other kids and enable trying to hide in her room. One of our neighbors was with us, and when she saw them, she rushed into my wife's bedroom together with my little daughter Fatima and another and two of her, her children. They tried to hide inside my wife's house, and another one was with Leila. Leila was the one whom we were kidnapped, uh, kidnapped with. She was sitting in the parlor. She was dazed. She couldn't do anything. She didn't move. She was holding her phone and a tap was nearby. So they collected all those and they brought all of us out 
myself, my wife, the neighbor, uh, my neighbor's wife, and the, initially they wanted to take all of us out. But when we went outside the house, they decided that only Leila and myself should go. And they told my wife and my neighbor's wife to return to the house. I told them Lila was sick. She's she, she's a sickler. Uh, I pleaded with them with them to go with me and leave Lila alone, but they ignored me. So they took me to the bushes near our houses. Leila and her father were not sufficient to satisfy their insatiable greed for their target ransom. They needed more people. So the search for more victims continued, breaking into people's houses until they were able to assemble nine victims. And meanwhile, here in Bakuri, an alarm had been raised. The vigilantes were summoned and they decided to head off towards uh, a town called Anja, in Anja local government area. They know that if they took us through the, 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 the bush, we are likely going to come out uh, along that road. And they knew the route, so they went there and took positions, the vigilantes. And just before the vigilantes, there was also a roadblock by policemen who were taken from Bakuli. So by the time we reached that place, from afar, we could see the policemen uh, flashing their torchlights and stopping motorists on the way. The bandits steered us away from that area. We went through the, 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 the plants, the maize farms and corn. And we were looking at them, but they couldn't see us as we were not putting on lights. So we passed and came out through another section, and that was where the vigilantes were hiding. And immediately they, they, they tried to cross the road. The vigilantes started shooting, and they too responded by shooting. And uh, one of the vigilantes, I think, was shot in the leg. And uh, there was pandemonium. Everybody just dispersed. Uh, some lay down, some uh, began to hide inside the maize farms. And I tried to run away at that time, and uh, I saw one of them holding my daughter's hand. So I just stayed put. Ambulance, <laughs> mutanan nan dai na nan hannun su mu kuma suna yi suna muna matsa musu dai a haka dai har Allah ya ba mu sa'a muka matsa mutanan nan to Allah dai cikin ikon Allah Allah ya ce muke mu wurin kokarin yin hakan neman har suka harbe ni a kafa to wurin harbun nan nawa a kafa wajen 11 na dare suka harbe ni nan meta blading jini na ta zuba gashi ana ruwan sama 
haka akai tai har gari yawa ina cikin wurin nan na fadi ba to Allah ya sa da sauran shan ruwa kuma na zo na tsinci kaina cikin wannan hali to alhamdulillah mutane wanda suka dauka Allah ya taimake mu kusan wajen mutum tare ne suka taida su amma bakwai sun dawo gida sauran biyu kuma akwai wani babban ma'aikaci wani ana ce mai boy da diyar shi to nan dai sai da suka tafi da shi cikin wannan lokaci to ba yadda za mu ni kai na ban san inda kai na yake ba ina cikin tabo kwanta cikin ruwa sai dai da safi ɗan uwa na ɗan vigilanti suka zo suka tafi da ni ni kai na ban san ma sun kai na asubuta ba Habibur Rabi was among the Nike kidnap victims, a neighbor to Abdul Kader. Luckily, before the vigilante engaged the kidnappers, he tactically escaped. Anjira kang labi mo na tayo. To na yung dey kama sa at ani na sa dey dey ginungo ni tarong abo gatawasa duhon tawasa ka wala na na suka na wala tukin duhon tawasa si na si na si na panta. ina ta addu'a cikin wannan tawasa ba motsi ba ina dai ta addu'a can sai naji an ce ayi gaba ayi gaba ayi gaba yake nan suka ƙara gaba ni ina nan cikin kwance sai naji an yi gaba an tafi naji ba wanda ya taba ni ba komai na tabbata to insha Allah na sha sai da suka yi tafi suka yi nisa na tabbatar da sun yi nisa naji ban ji motsin wani ba shikenan ina hitowa hin shiga can cikin gona gindin wata giginya na zanna na ƙara huta na ƙara huta daga nan sai na hito na hawo wannan labi da muka tayi sai na yi baya ina ta sauri ina sasarwa ina sasarwa ina sasarwa na zo sai na bi da yake ba zan iya da wata inda muka bo ta gindar wannan rahi ta cikin wannan rahi ba sai na samu wani labi da ya yamma sai na yanka na tafi ina cikin tafiya ina cikin tafiya kawai sai na gani na bullo hanyar danja wajen wajen jiba na hawo titi ina ta tafiya ina ta tafiya he gani nan gani nan gani nan he anguwa hayan alhaji ina zuwa hayan alhaji sannan ruwan nan ya tsuge sai na je yake wajen wani mai shago na shiga nan na zanna greed could not allow the kidnappers to proceed to the den with two captives they wanted more to complement their lost victims and going back to bakuri was asking for trouble when they said since we were too few they needed more people so they decided to 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 block the road again and and take some hostages when the vehicles came they just opened fire on them and coincidentally it happened that it was a convoy of soldiers who were going to Faskali where they had a base there to fight the bandits so they shot at the toyota hilux uh, holding some of the soldiers and the soldiers responded by firing back and according to them when they rushed and met us the convoy broke into two half of the convoy made u turn and returned towards dalia and the other one just went on driving towards fontua the the, the rest came rushing and caught up with us they were running like hell some had lost their shoes some had uh, injured their the, the one of them had injured their, his feet they abandoned the ambush and went on with the journey when they arrived at the detention camp it was nothing better than a nomadic structure with no means of comfort The kidnappers never contacted the relative of their victims for 2 days and discovering that Abdul Kader was a journalist made it interesting. Since that day they they, they nicknamed me Benjarida. A journalist in Hausa is Benjarida. So I became very popular with them because they liked uh, journalists. They said that is very good, very good. We want you to 
go and tell the government about our feelings, what we were, what is done to us, the, the wrongs that are done to us. Please convey our message to the government. Throughout that period, they were just inviting neighboring people from other camps where they are also holding other hostages. They will come and sit down in front of me and say, are you really a reader? Are you really a journalist? I said, yes. One of them said, I have never in my life seen a journalist. This is my first time of seeing a journalist. I only hear you on the radio. The preferential treatment I was given was that when it comes to eating, I was separated from the rest of the crowd. There was a big bowl where the food is put and everybody puts his hand to eat. But they brought out one small burnt pot, which they, they, they gave me one with, with that Al-Haji, Al-Haji Ademu. Uh, they said we are the elderly people in that camp, so Danjarida and Al-Haji shouldn't eat with these animals. That was what they were saying. <laughs> so they put the food for us, the two of us. They even added if we were not satisfied, but the food was so horrible, you can't eat and get satisfied with it. It was just rice, palm oil, salt, and maggi. When the relative were eventually contacted, a high amount of ransom was asked to be paid. After about three days, negotiation started, and we assigned his best male child, Nasib, and Ibrahim Baro to be contacting the dealers with them. And negotiating went on for four days, and then after the four days, an agreement was reached on the amount to be given to them. And then we sought for the money the family collected, and uh, an affluent member of the family, uh, I will not tell you what is close the amount, uh, paid the gift. And then we sorted out the money. After sorting it out, we put in a, a sack, and then we decided the following day to go. While the negotiation was going on, the kidnappers had some sympathy for Abdul Kader and Leila. But the relationship soon became sore when he disclosed that he did not have enough money to pay for high ransom. Actually, that was the only time I was I suffered. They they asked how much. I was willing to pay. So I told, I pleaded with them that I had retired, I had no money, I was not working now. So all I could give them was half a million. And it was as if I had poured fire on them. They just took me outside. And about five of them descended on me with branches of trees and started beating me, beating me. At the time, I felt as if my shoulder was not on, on me. I was, I was shouting and they were beating me for, some, for about some minutes. I just didn't know where I was. I very nearly fell. And I remember I was blindfolded, I couldn't see. Then suddenly it stopped. Maybe they thought I, they were going to kill me or something and they didn't want to do that so they stopped and took me back and said if i dare mentioned that amount again they were going to kill me i thought we will not come back because how we suffer i thought we are going to die here i suffer a lot because i am a sickle cell and my legs were paining me i can't even walk then when we reached there, they bought medicine for me and my injections that I used to. Only myself and the first one, uh, the cyclist who took me were there. When we reached about 20 kilometers after joining the junction of the road that started from the area to Kuelo, so we saw two people, all of them uh, two in one machine. And then they stopped us, they said, are you the one we are negotiating regarding the road? I said, yes. 
Then we stopped. The two of them stopped on the middle of the road and are on this. And then they asked the person who was taking me to go back. I was holding the money. They started interrogating. The first question they asked me is, was, what was my relationship with, uh, with the person? So I told him, I am, uh, I, uh, I am his next door neighbor. All right, then the next question is, what important decision for you to go, to come? I say, in the spirit of good neighborhood. And then the next question, why do you so dare took that decision? I said, well, considering the incidences, considering the circumstances, and in the spirit of good neighborhood, and nobody was there to do this, I volunteered to do it in the spirit of good neighborhood. At that point in time, when we were busy discussing, then I saw him escorting my brother to join us. When I saw him, that was when I really uh, became upset and disturbed and this, I almost shed tears. He became dark, disturbed, upset like a madman. This is how I see him. That's why I lost my religion. Incidentally, when he approached us, when they are us, they advanced towards him and said, what's your relationship with this man? I quickly intervened and responded that I told you I am his next door neighbor. The kidnappers, on the other hand, had given them the impression that Leila and her father were going to be released on the same day. But it was not meant to be. The kidnappers had other plans. So after asking him to, uh, asking me to recognize him, they then said, okay, come. One of them took me aside from the rest of them and said, how much do we agree? Now, how much was brought here? I said, you haven't told me. So he told me and said, what is the balance now? And I told him the balance. He said, okay, that is the balance we are releasing you now to go and bring if you want to see your daughter alive again. Otherwise, we will just marry her off to one of our Fulani boys who need a wife. Buying a kwana beauty to who are a chance of Mwaji. Daga in the Akaji Mu set Tarada Babana Scat Okin, the Ganska Chanza Mwaji. Naja Chaman a kwana view. A chandina had the water Hadiza. It's a man and danger a cat locator. When Abdel Kader arrived home without Layla, it was a mixed feeling for the family members. Leila's mother especially thought the worst had happened to her daughter. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Naji parin chiki, amma kuma naji bakin chiki sosai. Saboda abin ya mun ciwo ya mun kunci. Ni a dauka ta ma ni ta rasu. Kawai ana boye man saboda yanayin ciwon nata. Expectation was high. But when they saw that I was the only one released, there was just sadness and people just started crying. And I just felt too bad for my wife because I was, I, I, she looked as if she was going to collapse when she saw me without her daughter. The kidnappers insisted that another ransom needed to be paid to secure the release of Layla. Layla had to spend another 19 days before a negotiation was reached. When I was released, my cousin volunteered. But when it came to taking uh, Layla's ransom, he was sick at the time. So it was difficult to ask anybody else again to volunteer. So I, I did it myself. While all these were going on, members of the family relied very little on security agents. To be honest with you, people have lost confidence in the government. It happened to many families. Nothing yielded. So, and when you, are, you have to look at the person you are dealing with. These are people who have no stake. They have no future ambition. They have no conscience. They have no rationality. 
any lesson they do, they can easily take somebody off. Like when they say they, they, they are going to kill him, they can, what do they lose? They have nothing to lose but everything. Again. So we decided just to, we, our concern and our effort is just to really see him, prepare himself and his daughter. If you go to this government, anything can happen. It has not happened and it has not yielded any result. Researchers, historians and journalists have highlighted several factors that have led to the deteriorating state of kidnapping in the Northwest. The failure of the criminal justice system, environmental degradation, the lack of political will to address cattle rustling and farmers' harvest clashes to mention but a few are some of the factors. For those who have had first-hand contact with the kidnappers, they cited the discontinuation of government policies channeled towards the nomads as another factor. They say, look at what is going on regarding the road uh, development, regarding education, regarding health, regarding uh, all other aspects. I say, all right, the government is doing its best. But then I started saying, either the government is not fair, and told us to identify with them, to identify with their aspirations. And we went on discussing about this. And then from there, then they started uh, saying what motivated them to go into this kind of thing. This they said there was a high level of underdevelopment. They are neglected, no provision of education. The government initially started giving them uh, nomadic education, but during the era of, uh, uh, during Obasanjo's regime, then the program stopped. Then they, are, they have no access to education. They have no access to health uh, facilities. They have no access to pipe on water. They have no access to any form of immunity. Is that government, is the, is the government fair? I say not fair, but it's something that cross across, but they say that the least developed person. They were showing me to talk more about them, but I, as they were asking me questions, I was also building questions to them. I say, you, the way I see you, you are hitting a wrong target. Your problem with the government. Why do you go and get innocent people like that? Uh, people who are peasant, who are less privileged, who are struggling for life, who do not enjoy government like you, uh, government facilities like you, and then they say they wanted to send a message. The harm that various communities have experienced collectively and individually as a result of this conflict in the Northwest is worrisome. Some have completely lost their means of survival all to pay in ransom. Some have lost their life while many are living in fear. The NBC director and Leila could have been saved because they could afford to pay ransom. But how about those who could not afford to pay any ransom? If the problem is allowed to continue, the society may witness a severe breakdown of law and order. <laughs>